Control spells are spells whose purpose are to restrict, eliminate, or take control of a creature's ability to use its actions, usually through negative status effects or controlling the terrain itself. So in this video, we'll go over some of the best control spells that exist in the game. Starting off at number 10, we have Plant Growth. This is a third level spell that has a range of 150 feet and an incredible 100 foot radius area of effect. This is one of the largest area of effect spells in the entire game. It targets all the plants in the area, causing them to grow wildly, creating an area of restricted movement for all of those within it. While most movement hampering spells create difficult terrain, which forces you to expend two feet of movement for every one foot of movement you would normally use, or effectively having your movement speed, plant growth doubles that difficult terrain effect and requires four feet of movement for every one. So your average creature with 30 feet of movement would have to spend 20 feet of movement to move one square and then stop, as they don't have 20 more movement. Though if they use the dash action to get an extra 30 feet of movement, they would be able to move a total of 15 feet within this area. Still, this often means that those affected by plant growth can only move one square at a time without using their action to dash. And while there are other spells that limit movement speed and have other beneficial effects, plant growth has two useful properties most of those spells do not. First, it does not require concentration, and it has a permanent duration. This allows you to throw out other concentration spells on later turns while still controlling your enemy's movement with plant growth remaining active. This works particularly well with continuous area damage spells like Moonbeam or Insect Plague, as the enemies can barely move so they won't be able to escape the damage in area. Secondly, you are allowed to shape plant growth's area of effect however you wish, including or excluding certain places in the area. This means that in enormous radiuses, you can create unobstructed paths for your allies to move through. This minimizes the friendly fire aspect that many area of effect control spells have, and it does all this without requiring any saving throws from your enemies, so you always get the effect you expect. It's not all upside though, as it does have the environmental requirement of needing plants in the area ready, so it has little utility on perfectly paved city streets or deep underground. Though this can be bypassed with a little bit of ingenuity, such as carrying around a bag of tiny seeds and tossing them over an area and then casting the spell afterwards, or using other spells that can create plants like Entangle. However, the seed thing might not technically be rules as written, so it's more of a something you'd have to ask your DM if they would even allow you to do that. So this limitation is why plant growth only comes in at the bottom of this list at number 10. If you can use it, then it's a great effect, although the problem is that you can't always use it. Coming in at number 9, we have Watery Sphere. This is a 4th level spell that has a range of 90 feet and a duration of 1 minute with concentration. Much like the spell's name would suggest, it summons a sphere of water that has a 5 foot radius. You can use your action to move it up to 30 feet each turn in a straight line, carrying any creature's restrained by its effect along with it. Whenever the sphere shares the space of the creature, the creature must make a strength saving throw or be engulfed and restrained by the sphere, but huge size or larger creatures automatically succeed the save, as they can't fit inside the sphere. Not only does Watery Sphere restrain a creature, it also lets you forcefully move them wherever you wish while engulfing and beginning to drown any creature that needs to breathe in the process. This engulfing effect can prevent a spellcaster from casting spells or a leader from giving orders. Force movement is also rare in Dungeons and Dragons, especially when it can be used repeatedly over the course of several turns. A similar spell like Telekinesis is higher level and doesn't come with a restraining effect. Watery Sphere's 5 foot radius might seem small, but it does also serve as an area denial function especially in tight corridors that a party of adventurers so often find themselves in, as a watery spear in a narrow hallway that can't be bypassed forces saves from anyone who wants to pass through it. This is a spell that restrains, forces enemies to move where you want, can affect multiple enemies at once, and lasts for a full minute, all for the cost of a single level 4 spell slot, which makes watery spear a shoe in for this list, but still at a lower spot as you'll see how strong spells get as we continue up the list. And at number 8 we have Dominate Monster. This is an 8th level spell that has a 60 foot range and can be concentrated up for up to 1 hour. When cast, the spell requires a target make a wisdom saving throw. On failure, the caster gains complete control over the target's actions, and this works on any creature that isn't undead. The ability to completely control another creature's actions, with nearly no stipulations, is arguably the most powerful thing you can do in the game, as it warps action economy in a way most other control spells can't. Most control spells just inhibit a target's actions and make them end their turn without profitably using their actions, but dominating a target adds their actions to your own. Increasing your action economy every turn, the spell remains active. You can spend your action to take full control over the dominated creature, but you can also just give general commands as a free action, thanks to the telepathic bond this gives you to the creature you dominated, so long as you remain on the same plane of existence. The target also doesn't receive any additional saving throws in their turn, something that a vast majority of control spells do allow. Instead, a dominated creature can only attempt the saving throw again when it takes damage. For a DM, this can be a very interesting tool, as this means that the party would have to attack their ally to help them break free of the spell, which in turn means less damage to the big bad guy who cast it on them, 
and of course the reverse would also be true of players using this on an NPC. There is also a lesser version of the spell called Dominate Person, which is a 5th level spell that has the exact same effects, except that instead of targeting all creatures except the undead, it can only target humanoids. And this can be quite useful in social situations as gaining complete control over another creature, while morally dubious, has nearly unmatched utility when trying to achieve non-combat goals, like finding out information, gaining access to restricted areas, or any number of other creative uses. With how absolutely powerful both Dominate Person and Monster are, you may be wondering why this isn't higher on the list. And there are three reasons these spells aren't much higher. Firstly, both are fairly high level spells, which means it will be a while before you gain access to them. Secondly, they can only affect one creature. Thirdly, if the creature is already fighting you, they have advantage on the save, meaning it will be much harder to actually get this off. Especially as the higher level you get, the better the saving throws your enemies tend to have, and having advantage on a roll is a net plus 5 to it. So mainly if you try to get the spell off before combat begins. That said, the sheer power of successfully casting Dominate Monster is why it takes a spot on this list, with Dominate Person thrown in there alongside for good measure. And at number 7, we have Web. This is a second level spell with a range of 60 feet and an area of effect of a 20 foot cube, and lasts for up to 1 hour with concentration. Web's effect is that the 20 foot cube it occupies becomes difficult terrain and is lightly obscured. Any creature that starts its turn in the web's area has to take a dexterity saving throw or be restrained by the webs. The creature can use its action to make a strength check against your spell save DC to try to break free on its turn. Now, giving a creature two attempts to avoid or break free of the spell isn't usually ideal. Typically, you want your control spells to have as few ways to break out as possible. But the upside is that web is only a second level spell, and the difficult terrain it imposes is not avoidable. Positioned correctly, a creature might not be able to escape the web without using its action to dash, something that a creature can't do if it failed its dexterity save and had to use its action to break free instead. This can cause a small cascade of failures from a creature trapped in it as they struggle to avoid being restrained and to escape the area of effect. Something that separates web from similar spells like Entangle is that it can be cast in the air, forcing flying enemies to make the save or be restrained, causing them to plummet. The web will collapse in on itself on your next turn if it's lacking an anchor, but the aerial restraint spells are few and far in between, and web fulfills this important niche, especially at lower levels where most parties will have no way to fly themselves. Another interesting feature of the web is that fire will instantly burn away any part of the web exposed to it, but the creatures in the same burning web spaces take an automatic 2d4 fire damage. While the restraint is usually worth more than that, a little bit of extra damage never hurts. In the game I'm currently running, my party were in a room with a mini boss who was supposed to beat them up a little bit and then escape. But then the wizard cast a web and the boss kept failing their saving throw, allowing the party to finish him off. Luckily, I know my players and already had a plan for if she died there, but still, it took me a bit by surprise that the single cast of web hampered my creature so much. While web is taking a lower spot on this list, it's still an excellent spell that I would encourage anyone to take at lower levels, as in the early levels its ability to control the battlefield can't be beat. And at number 6, we have Wall of Force. This is a 5th level spell that has a range of 120 feet and a duration of up to 10 minutes with concentration. It creates an invisible wall of, you guessed it, force wherever you choose within range, and can be set up in any orientation you desire, either in the air or in the ground. The wall manifests in the form of 10 panels that are 10 feet by 10 feet each, giving you 100 square feet to work with. The only real limitation is that all the panels must touch at least one other panel, or you can forego the panels and just shape it into a 10 foot radius dome. It can't be dispelled by normal means and is impervious to damage, making it at least a halfway decent way to detain spellcasters. The spell is a little complicated, but at its core, it allows you to create a giant force field to completely block off or even capture whatever or whoever you want. It even blocks travel through the ethereal plane, so you can catch creatures like hags and ghosts with it. The most powerful thing about Wall of Force is, short of counterspell, there's no resisting it. Most control spells give your targets a chance or save or make a check to escape. With Wall of Force, you cut off whatever area of terrain you want to cut off, no stipulations. You can even summon the panels in a creature's space and push them in the direction of your choosing, letting you coral several creatures at once into the same confined area. While it's only 5 feet, irresistible force movement is nearly unheard of in the game. This spell can remove several creatures from a fight, completely taking away their ability to even interact with you, much less threaten you with attacks or most spells. This is a near unparalleled level of control on multiple enemies due to its incredibly large area of effect and the sheer amount of versatility that being able to arrange the panels to your liking grants you. It's like an instant, modular, inescapable prison for the vast majority of monsters in the game. Really, the biggest downside of all force is that it's a 5th level spell, so you don't get it until level 9 at the earliest. And at number 5, we have Polymorph. This is a 4th level spell that has a range of 60 feet and a duration up to 1 hour if you keep your concentration up. 
Polymorph transforms a target creature into a beast of your choosing, whose challenge rating is less than or equal to the target's challenge rating or level. Polymorph is well known for its incredible utility, allowing players to transform themselves into all sorts of beasts to gain access to their combat prowess. But beyond its ability to transform allies into various useful beasts, it can be used offensively as a control spell. When cast on an unwilling creature, the target must make a wisdom saving throw, and on a failure, they turn into a beast of your choice. This allows you to transform any creature that fails into something completely harmless and unable to fight back. Any critter will work as long as they have low health, a slow move speed, and they can't hurt you. While it doesn't completely disable the target, what Polymorph does better than similar single target incapacitation effects is gives you free reign to do whatever you want with the creature left behind, and plenty of time to do it. Enough time to finish the rest of combat, for instance. One time, I set a Catoblius against my players and they polymorphed it into a rat. Then, the wizard has familiar take the rat and fly 200 feet in the air and drop it. A polymorph creature reverts to their true form if they take damage in their polymorph state. And any additional damage that would usually be overkill gets taken by the original form instead. So the Catoplebus took 20 d6 fall damage and the first damage applied to the rat, reverted it to its original form, then its original form took the rest of it, allowing them to make quick work of it. Unlike most control spells of this level of power, there are very few types of creatures that are immune to polymorph, as it's not a charm effect, nor is it poisoning or frightening a creature. The only creatures polymorph really doesn't work on are golems, as most of them have the immutable form trait, which makes them immune to magic that changes their form. But still, a single successful polymorph is almost always an instant defeat for that enemy. And at number 4, we have Hold Monster. This is a 5th level spell that has a 90 foot range, lasts for 1 minute, and requires concentration. Its effect is very straightforward. The target must make a wisdom saving throw, and on a failure they're paralyzed for the full duration. Though they can repeat this save at the end of each of their turns. The reason this spell is so far on this list is because of how strong the paralyzed condition is. You see, a paralyzed creature is incapacitated, meaning it can't take actions or reactions. It also can't move or speak. They automatically fail strength and dexterity saving throws, attack rolls against them have advantage, and most critically, any attack that hits the creature is a critical hit if the attacker is within 5 feet of the paralyzed creature. This is the most powerful condition you can impose on a creature in combat, and is on par with the unconscious condition. Only difference being the unconscious target is knocked prone and makes them unaware of their surroundings as well. Unlike Dominate Monster, this spell can target any creature, including undead, and while it can't force them to work for you, it will still take them out of the fight long enough to finish any other enemies. Or at least long enough for your fighter to get a full round of critical hits in that will down most creatures you'll be facing at this level. There is also Hold Person, which does the exact same thing as Hold Monster, but it is a second level spell which can only target humanoid creatures. And its range is only 60 feet, and it's not as strong as Hold Monster, but you can get it much earlier, which is a fair trade-off. The reason why this spell beats out the similar spell Dominate Monster is because while Dominate Monster can more firmly control a single creature, it can only ever control a single creature. Where when you upcast Hold Monster or Hold Person, you can target one additional creature for each spell slot above its base level, whereas upcasting Dominate Monster or Person only allows you to increase the duration of the control. While having a single creature fight for you is good, forcing half the creatures fighting you to freeze is far better. This is just an excellent control spell that all casters should look into taking if they can. Next up at number 3, we have Hypnotic Pattern. This is a 3rd level spell which has a mass of 120 foot range and a fairly large 30 foot cube area of effect, and lasts for up to 1 minute with concentration. When cast, every creature in the area who sees the pattern makes a wisdom saving throw. On a failure, they become charmed for the duration. This by itself is a solid effect, but those charmed creatures are also incapacitated and have their movement speed reduced to 0. The more interesting thing about this is that unlike many other control spells, the creatures do not get another chance to save against the effect on their turns, so they remain in this condition for the entire duration. The only way to break them out of the stupor is for another creature to use their action to shake them awake or to have them take any damage. What this means is that any creature in the air of effect that fails their saving throw basically just sits there and does nothing, stupefied by the spell and completely unable to take any actions until you or your allies are ready to start damaging them, or until their allies waste their actions to undo the effect. A hallmark of a powerful control spell that still requires a saving throw is an incapacitating effect and no follow-up on saving throws. Hypnotic Pattern does both of those things while having an excellent range and size. Its large area of effect gives it some of the highest potential of any spell in the game. It's comparable and oftentimes even superior to its fellow level 3 fireball at taking out large numbers of enemies. And any spell that's competitive with fireball certainly deserves such a high spot on this list. And coming in at number 2 on this list, we have Mass Suggestion. This is a 6 level spell that has a range of 60 feet and can target up to 12 creatures that can hear and understand you. It lasts for 24 hours and does not require concentration. And if upcast, this spell can last up to a year and a day. 
Now, what this spell does is allow you to suggest a course of action for the targets to follow you, then forces the targets to make a single wisdom saving throw, and on a failure, they follow that course of action to the best of their abilities for the entire duration. Now, there are some restrictions on what you can suggest. The suggestions must be worded in such a manner as to make the course of action sound reasonable, so you can't just ask the creature to do something that is obviously harmful, like stab itself or walk off a cliff. Because if you do, the spell effect will just end. Now, any creature that is immune to being charmed is also immune to this spell, so you won't be able to use this on mindless creatures like undead and constructs, as they are almost universally immune to being charmed. As we talked about in the previous on this list, having a spell that gives only a single saving throw before controlling the creature with no additional saves and subsequent turns is the hallmark of a great spell. And while Hypnotic Pattern lasts for one minute, this spell lasts for a full day. The way this spell is most often used is just telling a group of enemies to lay down your weapons and go back home. This allows you to both loot their weapons and send them away without needing to fight, effectively ending an encounter. Unlike Hypnotic Pattern, there is no way for a creature affected by this spell to be roused out of it just as long as you and your allies don't damage them. There is also a lower level single target version of the spell in the same vein as the Dominate Monster and Hold spells from earlier on this list. Normal Suggestion is a second level spell that only has a 30 foot range, lasts 8 hours, and does require concentration. Much weaker than its multi-target older brother, but still worth noting here as it does pretty much the same thing, except you have to keep concentration. Unlike the other control spells on this list which can restrict or restrain creatures in combat, these spells can end a combat altogether, and that's why they take the penultimate spot on this list, barely edged out by the top spot on this list with the next spell. And last, but certainly not least, at the number one spot we have Force Cage. This is a 7th level spell with a 100 foot range and a 1 hour duration that does not require concentration. We've talked about this spell previously in different videos, but for this I'll go over quickly again here. Force Cage enters a cubed shaped prison composed of magical force. You can make this prison be a cage with bars spaced half an inch apart or as a solid box. The cage style prison can be up to 20 feet long on each side, while the box size version can be 10 feet on each side. Creatures trapped inside a force cage basically get full cover as solid matter as well as spells cannot be cast into or out from the area. Much like a wall of force, a force cage extends into the ethereal plane, which blocks travel there allowing you to trap a hag or ghost. But in addition to that, a creature inside the cage cannot leave by non-magical means, and the cage is immune to dispel magic. This leaves you only really three options to escape. First, and most unreliably, is teleportation or plane shift type spells. The reason this is unreliable is that if you do try to teleport out of the cage, you must make a charisma saving throw and on a failure, you don't exit and you just waste the spell slot. Second, you can cast anti-magic field, but this is rather wasteful as you would be using an 8th level spell to escape from a 7th level spell, and you only ever get one 8th level spell slot per day. The third and most reliable way to escape is the disintegration spell, which has a caveat in its text which allows it to target a creation of magical force. Now, the thing is, while you could try teleporting out by casting Misty Step over and over again, hoping to make the saving throw, the only two reliable methods require you or your targets to be very high level spellcasters to actually escape the cage. Now, yes, this doesn't literally end a combat like Mass Suggestion does, but it does take the trapped creature entirely out of the fight unless they have high level spells prepared. And thanks to the one hour duration, you could trap a group of enemies inside, finish off all their allies, then take a short rest before the spell ends and finish off the other group. But one of the most potent uses of this is combining it with spells like Sickening Radiance. As you see, spells cannot pass through the cage, but if you cage enemies who are already inside of an AoE spell, the effect will remain, but they will be unable to escape from its area. While there are other AoE spells you could combine with Force Cage, Sickening Radiance stands out because its 10 min duration is combined with increasing levels of exhaustion, which when stacked up to 6 kills a creature outright. And if you're trapped in the Radiance for the full 10 minutes thanks to the Force Cage, you're making 100 saves in that duration. And if you make less than 95 of them, you are dead. Not to mention the 4d10 radiant damage you'll be taking every round. Unlike previous spells on this list, the Force Cage can affect any target regardless of their immunities, ability to understand you, and even regardless of their saves because the best part about Force Cage is that there's no saving throw. Unless an enemy uses Counter Spell to try to stop you from casting it, it just appears where you want it to and no one in the area can make a save to avoid it. And that's why it takes the top spot on this list. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any other better control spells you think should have belonged to this list, or do you have any ideas for future videos just like this one? If so, I'd love to hear about those down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe so I can pressure my channel manager to do it more work.